You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Rabbi Zeb, what's going on in your world? What's going on in the world and here in Israel, the same thing that's going on in the States and around the world, panic. Everybody continues to panic, whether they know they're panicking or they don't know they're panicking, but the demonic outpouring in the world is created for people to panic. And you, you started off the program by saying, it's okay uh, to be in large crowds here, but it's not okay uh, to be in large crowds there. Well, all, here in Israel, the spirit of religion is operating. I mean, it's spirit, the, the Antichrist spirit operates in many forms. You know, Satan is, a, you know, he has many masks and uh, his demons disguise themselves in many ways. And one of the ways that they're disguising themselves here in Israel with this COVID-19 is trying to turn the nation religious through the COVID-19. And you may be asking, how can you turn a nation religious through the COVID-19? Well, it's very simple. What is their main agenda, the ones who don't believe in Jesus and Yeshua? Their main agenda is to worship the Sabbath. Now, they may not say that they worship the Sabbath, but that's what they do. Uh, they don't celebrate the Sabbath. They worship the Sabbath. The authority of the Sabbath here is over God. Uh, here in Israel, from Wednesday evening all the way till Friday sundown, all they talk about is the Sabbath. Well, they found a way to use the COVID-19 right now to try to turn everybody religious. And how are they doing it? They're saying that uh, the COVID-19 operates, especially Fridays, sundown. So we need to close everything down Friday at 5 p.m. until Sunday morning at 5 a.m. But the rest of the week, it's okay to be open. See, the COVID-19, you, you, you won't get, contag you won't get uh, sick. You won't get, you won't get the COVID-19 in the middle of the week if you wear a mask. But if you wear a mask on Friday sundown until Sunday, you might get the COVID-19. So we need to lock everything down. So right now in Israel, there is a law that everything has to be shut down from Friday until Sunday. Well, the people of Israel uh, are, not, are not buying it. What are they doing? They're doing protests, and they're kind of blaming Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, for this and telling him to resign of everything. There is no spiritual warfare over there with what's happening with Donald Trump. We see the exact same thing of the demonic outpouring uh, operating behind the scenes. And they're saying, you've been trying to turn Israel into a religious country for decades, for thousands of years. Well, in fact, well, Israel's only been a nation from 1948, but you know, the, the spirit of the uh, Sanhedrin, the uh, Sadducees, the Pharisees has been operating for thousands of years since the time of Yeshua, Jesus. Nothing's changed in 2000 years. And people are seeing it as a political agenda to try to turn Israel into a religious country by not going out from Friday until Sunday. But it's okay in the middle of the week to gather and you know, there's no problem there. So that's what's happening here in Israel. That's how the COVID-19 is being influenced by the demonic realm in one way. But everything the devil has ever done, he always loses. It always falls apart at some point. Not only does he always lose, he's already lost before the foundation of the world. He's playing a game that he can't win. It's clear, he knows he can't win. But what he's trying to do is take with him as much as he can uh, to the uh, other side, to the lake of fire. That's his agenda because he's already lost everything. Uh, look, it's very clear here in Israel, two years ago, 846 people died from the flu. It barely was reported on the news. This year, 314 people or 315 people died from the coronavirus. Most of them were over 90 years old. Every life matters, we know this, but still, you know, these elderly people may have died from the flu or may have died from a sickness or something else. And yet all of Israel is in total panic and we're getting a lot, a lot of questions from people around the world. Why are you wearing a mask when you're doing an outreach? Doesn't the Bible, uh, you know, are you submitting to, to uh, government authority by doing that? Are you uh, submitting to God by doing that? Are you scared? You're, you're preaching on one side that, you know, don't be scared of this coronavirus. Trust only in the blood of Yeshua. Trust only in, in, in the salvation that he gave, gave to us. Trust only in, in uh, the Holy Spirit. And then yet you go out and wear a mask. What kind of a testimony is that? And what about people who wear masks in a congregation? And so we're getting a lot of emails on that. So I can't answer all these emails. So I think this is a 
good platform to answer that question today. Well, the government, the, the Bible is clear. It says submit to government authority. It's in the book of Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Submit to government authority. What does that mean? Because every government authority has been established by God. Am I saying that Hitler was established by God? I'm saying that Hitler was allowed to be established by God. That's what it means. Am I saying that Haman was established by God? He was allowed to be established by God. Satan has limited power. Whatever God doesn't allow, Satan can't do. And that means that when it says to submit to government authority, it means to submit to government authority if it's in line with the Word of God. If it tells you to contradict the Word of God, don't do it. Now, I wore a yarmulke, a head covering, a kippah, when I go out to preach to religious Jews here in Israel, because otherwise I won't be able to preach the gospel to them. Am I compromising the Word of God? No. Am I submitting to government authority? In a way, yes, because the government authority says that if you go into the Kotel area, which is the Western Wall, you have to wear a head covering. If you go into Bnei Brak, which is a religious city in Israel, you have to wear a head covering. So I am actually uh, abiding in government authority, but I do not compromise the Word of God. In my own home, in my own congregation, when I go to conferences, when I preach in secular places, I do not wear a head covering. If tomorrow the government of Israel will say, you need to wear a head covering when you teach the Bible, it doesn't matter if you're teaching about Jesus or you're teaching about something else, you're opening a Bible, you need to wear a head covering, I won't do it. Because that is compromising the Word of God. It's leading other people astray, and it's telling them that's what the Bible says to do, to wear a head covering. So there has to be a balance. The balance is biblical balance. We do need to be uh, good citizens, abiding to the government authority, if it does not compromise the Word of God. If tomorrow they tell us, uh, you can't preach uh, that abortion is against the Word of God. You can't do it. If you do it, you'll go to jail for five years, or you'll get a, a 50,000 shekel fine. Or, or we will continue to preach the truth because, and once again, submitting to government authority means that we submit to government authority. The red line is when they tell us to do something that's not biblical, and that goes for everything. So if I was to go in Israel right now and I was to preach in an outreach, what we do here, uh, I'm in the Galilee area right now, teaching in a conference, if we were to go out in the street and to preach the gospel, I would have to wear a mask because the government has uh, established a law that you have to wear a mask. Now, am I, uh, do I think that I need to wear a mask? No. Do I think that the mask is going to protect me? Not really. I think Yeshua is going to protect me. But if I don't wear a mask, I won't be able to preach the gospel, and I'll lead other people here in Israel astray. Why? Because they'll get fines because I set an example to them uh, not to wear a mask. So again, but when I do preach the gospel, I tell them, don't put your trust in that mask. Put your trust in the Word of God. So it actually opens the gospel. So that's the, uh, you know, my point of view, according to the Bible. Now, other people like to ask me, well, what do you think about pastors or, or, or congregations in Israel or in America or other places that wear masks in the congregation? Are, are they in sin? Are they against the God? Well, they're going to, if, if a pastor or a leader of a congregation or a house group, if the Holy Spirit told them to wear a mask, then who am I to tell them not to wear a mask? They're going to have to answer to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But, very, very important. They need to pray and make sure that the Holy Spirit really told them to wear a mask in the congregation, and it wasn't fear. Very important to realize that. I will not wear a mask in my congregation, regardless. Well, the, the fear-mongering is just out of proportions at this point. I, I think I saw a study recently where in UK, on, uh, as well as in America, people uh, are believing that Millions and millions of people have died from the, from the virus. But in fact, that's not true at all. Uh, it's a very small percentage. I, I think it's one of the reasons they've been pushing the flu vaccination for so long, the last couple of decades, getting people prepared for this time. Um, of course, you know, where have we heard that before? Revelation 13. Nobody's going to buy or sell without that mark. So um, I know we're getting down to the last few minutes before the break. Um, but let me have you weigh in on this one. 
I can just tell you that uh, you know, people like to ask, are we are living on the time of Revelation 13? Well, Revelation 13, uh, I believe, is a, uh, is a compound prophecy. It's a prophecy that it's in motion. It doesn't just happen in one time. Yes, we are living in Revelation 13, but I don't know in what stage we're living in. Uh, 100% we're living in a time where they're going to try to force you to take vaccines, try to take you, try to force you to, to here in Israel to make an ID card that's uh, uh, biometric, to make a passport that's biometric, uh, to have everything uh, digital. It's happening right now here in Israel. I refuse to, uh, to cooperate with anything that's contradicting to the word of God. If they tell me tomorrow that I must take a vaccine, even a flu vaccine, I don't take the flu vaccine because I don't, I'm, it's not necessary to take it. I don't know what's inside of it. I know that more people here in Israel have been sick from this flu, vac from this flu vaccine over the years than the ones who didn't take it. So 100% it's control, it's demonic. Uh, again, am I giving a statement right now that no believer should take a vaccine? Once again, like I always like to say, pray to Yeshua, pray to God. If the Holy Spirit tells you to take a vaccine, then go ahead and do it. But make sure it's the Holy Spirit and it's not the 666 system operating behind the scenes. Good word. Uh, you know, I've got a number of physician friends. Uh, first of all, taking flu vaccinations, um, it's, it's for last year's strain anyways. As we mentioned earlier in the program, this is all about Israel. It's a battle over Israel. This is a spiritual, demonic, end time outpouring. And if we look at Psalms 83, now Psalms 83, there are, you know, there's many angles to Psalms 83, but I want to touch on the angle of Israel and this demonic outpouring that you just mentioned about uh, taking over. And that's exactly what the enemy is trying to do. In Psalms 83, verses 1 to 4, it says, Do not keep silent, O Lord, O Lord. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God, for behold, your enemies make a trumpet, a trumpet. And those who hate you lift up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. Who are your people? Well, the context here is Israel. But who's Israel? All those under the blood of Jesus, Yeshua, are Israel. They've taken crafty counsel against your people. And they've consult and consulted together against your sheltered ones. Well, who are the sheltered ones? All those under the blood of Yeshua. Those are the sheltered ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. You talk about burning, uh, burning Bibles. You talk about burning uh, Jews and the Holocaust. It's the same spirit that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. That's what it's about, that the name of Israel may not be remembered more, no more. Not just Israel that I'm speaking to you right now from the Galilee area. We're not just speaking about physical Israel. We're speaking about eternal Israel. This world is, go is going to pass. These Bible verses speaking about the prophetic, and that's what we're living in right now, in this time right now, where they want to wipe out Israel. We mentioned before earlier, you mentioned Facebook, you mentioned Twitter. They'll, uh, they won't let you uh, talk about the, anything against the COVID-19 or report anything that's true about the COVID-19. They'll let you report the COVID-19 if it's not true. But any exposure of the real agenda, they won't let you do it. But very interesting, the Iranian president and Iranian leader uh, tweeted not too long ago to wipe out genocide, the nation of Israel, just like right here in Psalms 83, verses 1 to 4, the same spirit, and Twitter said it doesn't violate their, uh, their rules. It doesn't violate their rules because they're, they're operating on a demonic spirit. Having said that, we're going to continue to use Twitter. We're going to continue to use Facebook as a platform to preach the truth because God is not going to keep silent. He doesn't want us being silent. He wants us to be his spokesman, his ambassadors. He tells us we are his ambassadors. What does an ambassador do? We go to another place, another nation, and, and we've got the kingdom behind us, right? So we've got a heavenly kingdom back in us. Uh, he even tells us, you know, the Lord said, all, all power on heaven and earth has been given to me. So how much does that leave for anybody else? And then he even told us, like, you know, Luke 10, 19, the all I give unto you, his church power over all the works of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And yet, look how the, the church has been hiding in the cleft of the rocks, like the Israelites, you know, just have young David go out against the Goliaths, right? They're all hiding rather than speaking out and, and sharing what's really going on here. Um, the word of God tells us we walk in the light as, 
He's the light. We've got fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin, right? And we say we haven't sinned, then the truth's not even in us. Amen, absolutely. Again, Psalms 83, you're sheltered ones. That shelter is Jesus, it's Yeshua. And ultimately, it's going to be Revelation 21, 3, behold, the tabernacle of man is now with God forever. That's the eternal shelter. But in the process of the shelter, that tabernacle lives inside of us. He's Jesus, Yeshua. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus in the flesh. But that, when he left, he left us a helper, the Holy Spirit, which is Yeshua. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. And that Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And we're called, yes, to be ambassadors. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 14, that you are the light of the world. Well, what's the light of the world? Does the light of the world hide? No, the light of the world exposes the darkness. We got it all mixed up around. Now, not everyone, but a lot of the believers around the world with this COVID-19 panic, with this mask panic, have uh, misplaced or abused the grace of God. And you say, what's the grace of God? The grace of God is Jesus, Yeshua, dying on the cross for our sins, ro rising on the third day. And if we uh, take that gift of grace and abuse it, and instead of being the light of the world, uh, we hide in, in, in darkness, then we're grieving the Holy Spirit. These are hard words, Pastor Casper, but they're true. And we know that the Bible is very, very clear that the Father is looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. And again, if you're scared, if you're panicking about this COVID-19, this is nothing compared to what's going to happen before the return of Jesus Yeshua. Am I setting any dates? No. But I know it's going to get worse because the Bible says it's going to get worse. Yeah, well, that, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear that, right? They, they just want to be having their ears tickled, which is why most of the churches now are so, you know, liberal. I mean, we did um, studies of how many churches there are. The, the greater majority are liberal. Now, if they're liberal, that means they don't really believe God said what he means and means what he said. Rabbi said, you just said to me during the break how simple it is. People want a complex answer from us. You and I get tons of mail every day, people asking and quarreling, you know, what about this, what about that? And, and they want us to give a very complex, a complex answer back, but it's not a complex answer. It's so simple that anybody can get it. Absolutely. As we're speaking right now, look at that. Uh, two, two, five or 2,700 emails I get in each, uh, each e inbox. I got four inboxes, another one, 2,800. And I can tell you that hundreds of these emails are panic over the COVID-19. And, you know, and when you give them an answer, a biblical answer, a lot of times they write you back. That's it? Don't you have anything else to tell us? I'm telling you the word of God. I'm not going to come up with an adventure and invent something. The gospel is simple. The message is simple. It's not logical. It's supernatural, but it's simple to those that have ears to hear, to those that want to know the truth. The Bible is clear in the book of James, Yaakov, the half-brother of Yeshua. If anyone lacks of wisdom, let him ask and he shall receive. That's anyone. That's not a professor only. That's not a doctor only. That is the simple man also. That is the factory worker. It doesn't matter. God is not a respecter of persons. He died on the cross for all mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And if you don't understand what the word of God says, or you don't understand what's going on in the world right now, and you're, and you're in panic, and you feel discouraged, ask and you shall receive if it's the will of god is it the will of god that you and i and the people listening now and in the future understand the word of god absolutely so based on the book of james there was a promise right there that if you ask god and it's his will he will provide you with the answer that is what we can that's the best news that we can give people who believe in yeshua the ones who don't believe in yeshua it's a wake-up call and now is the time to call on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. If you don't know Yeshua, Jesus is your Savior. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day to call on the name of the Lord. Today is the day to seek the truth. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going to go through. He is just to forgive by his blood, cleanse you, and save you. That is the best news that we can give today. The demons and Satan are shaking for what you and I are just saying right now. All glory goes to Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. And nobody's here by accident. If you're watching this, you're here by divine appointments. Well, they're going to have many vaccines. You're going to have countries saying, we have a vaccine, we have a vaccine. But is the vaccine real? Is the vaccine really effective? I don't think so. I don't believe so. That's what I'm saying.
vaccines you have. I mean, uh, it's clear. What are these really vaccines and what the agenda behind that vaccine is? I don't want to find out. I'm trusting in the word of God. Time is really moving fast. You feel Sunday to Friday and Friday to, to, to next, next Friday is so fast. You don't, you can't, it almost looks like yesterday was Sunday or yesterday was Friday because time is moving so fast. And it's a wake-up call. It's an end-time wake-up call to show us time is short, life is short, and, uh, but eternal life is forever. And now is the time again to just you know, put everything aside. Don't be afraid. Remember the book of Revelation says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the, and the testimony of their faith. 